Do the town manager's report now because this is what everybody waits for. <laughs> I believe it. It is. All right, my apologies. I navigated out of the folder. All right. Um, I had a productive meeting this afternoon with Colonial Power, which is the company that manages our energy aggregation program. This is the program that allows residents in Tingle Road to participate in our aggregation, which always sees um, energy supply rates lower than what National Grid is offering. Tingle Road is currently locked into a contract with First Point Power through November of 2024. The current rate is 0 0.13803 per kilowatt hour. And looking at some of the indicative pricing that we received today, uh, what we'll likely be looking at next week is executing an agreement effective November 2024 for 24 months at 13.025. Um, the energy market has been pretty volatile, but the rates are down right now, so this would be the time for us to act. It's a two-year contract, and then we'll start looking at rates again the, in two springs from now. Last week, we were notified that the Sewer Commission will receive $480,000 from the FY24 Congressional House Spending Package for a pretty expansive sewer capacity project. It's no, Tingsboro is not unique in the fact that we deal with capacity issues, largely because we rely on neighboring communities to send our sewage to, and they are having capacity issues. Regionally, this is a larger project to help reduce, that, reduce the amount of sewage that's going into these systems so that we can increase our capacity Fortunately, Tingsboro has been very um, strategic and cautious with development, particularly along the sewer lines, so we're not in as bad of a place as many of our neighbors are. But this is a huge win. The Sewer Commission does tremendous with federal earmarks. Just this year, they earned almost $900,000 in a congressional earmark for design of their next phase, so we're appreciative for the funding. We're moving right along on the design and construction estimating for the partial demolition, exterior, envelope restoration, and relocation of the original Winslow School. Um, there's not much in the way of schematic designs. We sent them the town meeting video to watch, uh, as well as the report that came out of the 250 visioning committee. Um, what they're really working on is how to make that feasible, and so the end result will be cost estimates that we'll provide a public update on. Um, there will be some minor considerations that we'll get some feedback on. For instance, part of the addition in the rear is going to be removed, and so we'll have a wall where we'll need to replace windows. I assume the Historic Commission would prefer that we match the ones that were in the front, but those are the minor um, design considerations. But Socotech, which is the engineer or the architect on the project, is moving along um, nicely on that project. The town center project is shaping up. The observation deck was installed last week, and site work continues this week. We also got the new plans from Time Bond on the foundations for the pedestrian bridge, and we're now working on getting the subcontractor schedule for the installation of the shallow foundations. Simultaneously, it's been a long road, but we've been working with MassDOT on the permitting piece. Essentially, we have three or four different maintenance agreements for the town, the veterans' monuments, which are technically on state par uh, property, the sidewalk over there. We're working with our town council and MassDOT Legal to consolidate all of those so that it'll be one maintenance agreement where the town obviously takes control and ownership of the things that we're putting on the parcel. The Public Safety Communications Upgrade Project is moving along. As this board knows, last month we had to pivot as it related to the placement of new microwave equipment. But fortunately, thankfully, um, the town of Westford and town of Drake have been helping us identify alternative places for the microwave equipment to go and it actually was beneficial to us because we identified an alternative approach that will boost not just our communications but communications from Drakeit and Westford which are two of the communities that we rely pretty heavily on for mutual aid particularly in the fire service. So that project will be completed by the end of the month. It's on budget um, and it'll be great to see that finally wrapped up. A reminder to residents that the Highway Department, the Board of Health, and the Sustainability Committee will host the 17th annual townwide cleanup this year during the month of April. Supplies are available now at Town Hall and at the Highway Garage. It's a relatively simple program. You gather as many or as few friends as you'd like, pick an area of town, and you pick up trash and leave it in the bright yellow bags that we provide. When you're done, you just have to tie the bags up, leave them on the curb, and the Highway Department throughout the day picks these bags up. We do generally get quite a bit of participation. Many of the schools help out. Um, there are obviously some areas in town that could use it the most, so wherever you see trash, um, please feel free to help. I want to just thank all our poll workers and the town clerk for hard work to make the presidential election primary last week happen. Many of the poll workers worked 14-hour days, and I know that um, Joanne was here at town hall until after midnight putting together the results. 
We are going back out to bid on Wednesday for the Bicentennial Field Irrigation Project. As this board is well aware, we value engineered some of the components out because the last time we went out to bid, the, the project costs were far higher than the budget. Um, the designer redid all of the bid docs. They're going to be released on Wednesday, and bids are due on April 3rd. And just a reminder that the select board will convene a tri-board meeting on April 8th at 6 p.m. here at Town Hall. That includes the Finance Committee, the School Committee, Select Board, and we've also confirmed the attendance of Senator Kennedy and Representative Colleen Gary. Thank you. That's all I got. Since you had so much there, I'll open up the board for any questions. Then Kat, because she's got a bunch as well. Lots of updates. Any questions from the board? Comments? I'm excited about the town center that they're working on that. Yes. A lot of good stuff happening. All right. Kat, take it away. All right. The Winslow School hazardous material abatement began today and is expected to last a month. You'll probably see a lot of trucks um, entering and exiting uh, the area by Littlefield as well. And we also have a pod set up. Um, I saw a couple of people while I, they were delivering it stop by, and that is where we're going to uh, store some of our documents um, after they're cleaned and until we figure out what to do with them. Uh, so the con contractor has erected a fence around the construction zone to contain the work. The Littlefield Library will remain accessible to the public. And additionally, last week, the underground storage tank was removed. A request for proposals was released for assessor's consulting service with proposals due March 20th. This service is procured for a three-year period. And the town has recently applied for an AARP Livable Communities Grant to fund an ADA accessible and or age-friendly benches and picnic tables up at the crypt. In addition, we also applied for historical markers and interpretive signs that will feature murals highlighting the town's rich history along the accessible ramp leading to and around the crypt, um, as well as the, the new footbridge. The goal of this grant application is to create a vibrant public space and educate residents on the area's history. A request for designer services was issued last month for the design of the new pavilion at the new Sherburn Ave Recreation Center across from the Toll Brothers property. This project was awarded to Robert Hannon Architecture out of Salem, New Hampshire, who met the criteria outlined in the RFS. They will be responsible for preparing the design, construction documents, and estimates for us to issue a bid for construction. And staff are working with the engineering firm KNA, who is preparing the design, construction, and estimates and bid docs for phase one of the Sherburn Ave Rec Center project. A draft plan was sent last week for the town uh, to review. And staff plan to convene a meeting with Sherburn Ave Open Space Visioning Committee sometime in April to provide an update on where we are with the project and to hopefully uh, show them the new clubhouse. And lastly, staff are meeting with the contractor, award, uh, contractor awarded the police station parking lot project hatch group for a site walk this Wednesday, and then to plan to schedule a date to begin construction of the new parking lot at the police station. Excellent. Thank you for the updates. Um, any questions, comments from the board? No, lots of stuff. I mean, it's only been two weeks, and yeah. you guys went through two full pages. <laughs> so good job. Lots of things happening. Um, Colin, where can people see this information? You can catch the town manager's report as a brief visual on social media with a link to the full report. It's got its own category on tingsboroughma.gov where you can sign up for alerts anytime one is published. Thanks to Tingsborough Media, it's also a podcast so you can listen to it while you drive, which is what everybody wanted, I'm sure. And you can also catch a copy of it on the, I think it's still on the front page of the Neighbor to Neighbor every month. Lots of places. And if you have a suggestion for another place, we'll find it. Excellent.